All right, so let's talk a little bit about the advertising decisions covered in Chapter 18 in your book. They talked about different kinds of advertising. They talked about pioneering advertising. That, of course, would be at the introduction stages of a new product. And then they talked about competitive advertising, which would be done uh, as, uh, as, you, as you start to generate selective demand and you have lots of competition. Remember, though, that all product advertisements are focused on three basic goals. Build awareness, persuade, and remind. All right, to developing an advertising program, remember we already talked about identifying the target market, specifying the advertising objective, setting the advertising budget. Now what? Well, now let's talk a little bit about design, designing the actual message. Of course, this is the creative aspect of, uh, of marketing and this is the, the part that everybody thinks that they're very good at turns out that that being creative is much more difficult than you might admit right originally think all right so when I decide on a, on a trying to determine what the message should be for my particular product the very first thing I need to go back to is my target audience I want to make sure that the message that I generate is 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 a message that creates a desire for the product create some sense of exclusivity for the product and is believable. So I need a message that creates desire, is exclusive and believable. So designing the message, all right? And so when I design the message, there are four areas that, that of message design that need to be considered. Content, appeal, message structure, and message source. So when we, when we talk about content, the question is what really needs to be communicated? Is there information that needs to be communicated? Do I need to compare uh, my brand to another brand? Is it a positioning uh, com uh, uh, information that needs to be uh, communicated? Is it lifestyle, etc.? So when I think about the content, I ask myself, how do I want people to be different after they get done viewing the message or listening to the message or seeing the message or being immersed in the message? Next on the list is appeal. Of course, we're familiar with humor appeals, fear appeals, logic appeals, gear, guilt and shame appeals, and moral appeals. Of course, humor appeals we see all the time in marketing. Um, this is when we, the, you know, the, a lot of the uh, advertisements now for insurance are, are humorous. Um, Progressive and Geico and a number of those companies now do, do try to do humor appeals. Um, humor appeals often work in a cluttered marketing environment, but they do have the disadvantage of wearing out relatively quickly. Fear appeals work very well. Uh, fear appeals are designed to uh, create a level of anxiety or fear and then suggest that your product is the one that would remove that fear. Uh, a logical appeal is one where I try to appeal to you from a logical perspective. These are appeals that typically have numbers and comparisons of, of alternatives where I where the and you know total cost and so this is an appeal where I try to logically get you to understand why you should buy my product. The fourth appeal is called guilt and shame, which is one of our favorite appeals. This is the idea where I try to guilt you or shame you into doing something. Um, uh, your uh, children try to do this with their adults all the time uh, when they suggest, for instance, that you know. Why do you need a new car? Well, I need a car because Billy got a new car and, and Sarah got a new car. Um, and all the other parents have doing that. And so there's this idea of, of, of using a guilt or shame approach uh, as an appeal. And then finally, there's a moral appeal. That is, it's the right thing to do. All right, and there are other appeals, but these are the five that we see most often in advertising. Structure. There are a couple of structure issues. There are four structure issues. Let's start with the with the first two. The first one is conclusion drawing. Should I draw the conclusion for the customer or let them draw their own conclusion? In other words, should I say, you need to do this. This is the best product. Or should I let the customers draw their own conclusion? Well, in general, it's always thought that it's best to let the customer draw their own conclusions if they are both willing and able to. That is, if they have enough information and are smart enough to do that, then you want them to uh, draw their own conclusions. And if they are, in fact, willing to put the effort in to do that. On the other hand, if they're not, then you want to go ahead, especially for low involvement items, you might want a conclusion draw for them. 
Should you present one or two sided arguments? That is, in, in the next part here is the order of presentation. Uh, if if I'm going to present my arguments compared to someone else's arguments, uh, which is the order of presentation? So in one instance, there is a primacy effect. This is the this is the benefit of when um, um, when it, it, the idea behind a primacy effect is when information is presented relatively quickly or it's a high involvement uh, situation. I might want to make my arguments first. Recency effects work better. And this recency effect is the, the benefit of going last. Um, a recency effect has to do with um, low involvement situations and a long time between presentations where people forgot what the primacy issue was in the first place. So do I want to go first or, or second in terms, of, in terms of making my arguments? The answer is what? Well, I want to go first. Uh, when when there's a relatively uh, short window in terms of the time that all the information is presented and if it's high involvement if it's low involvement and it's a long drawn-out process I'd rather go last recency effects message source and spokesperson well who should deliver the message well we want a spokesperson who is credible likable and potentially knowledgeable and so I want to so I want a, a, a spokesperson who I believe would not lie for this particular product. I want someone who I like and is likable, and I want someone who is knowledgeable. And so if you think about the number of people, we often use sports figures, uh, movie stars, uh, a number of interesting spokespeople. Um, you know, but of course, you know that, that, that even an ad like um, um, uh, Motel 6 uses Tom Burdett. Um, you know, so the, who should be delivering my message? Well, hopefully someone credible, likable, and knowledgeable. So having the right message is critical for the target audience if you want to be successful. 